Sorry, are you going to introduce me? <laughs> Today I'm going to talk about um, fossil spiders, of course, um, and particularly some in lapis grime deposits. I'm going to start with uh, a very well known uh, Eocene formation, the Green River Formation. Uh, here it is at Fossil View National Monument in Wyoming. It crops out over a large area of Utah and Colorado as well. Um, and within the rock sequence, you find some dark fossiliferous layers, routine organic matter, and stuff. That's some of them are oil shales. And there's various horizons that are abundant in, in fossil, particularly the well known fish, Nightia. This is the outcrop. Um, and you can see it separates into a number of different separated lakes um, back in the Eocene. Lake Goshoot, Lake Goshoot, um, Lake Winter, and so forth. Uh, in stratigraphically, what we have is a number of different lakes of varying extent over a, a long period of geological time, three, three major lake systems. And in fact, this is the largest uh, Great Lakes complex in the fossil record. Uh, it spanned 38 to 55 million years ago and um, covered 25,000 square miles. Very <coughs> lapis run deposits. And we're fortunate to have an old satellite photo of uh, the <laughs> uh, to show what it what it would have looked like. Um, well known are fish and you get fish mortalities, mass mortalities. And interestingly, the fish mortalities seem to have a different uh, cause in each of the different lakes that have been studied. Very interesting biota, some of the earliest bats, snakes here, um, other things, nice plants. Uh, but I'm going to look at the, at the spiders. And up until, oh sorry, what a nice photo as well. <laughs> Up until very recently, there was one specimen described of a spider from the Green River Formation. This thing called Ninifier Byronite. Uh, Ninifier is a modern genus. Um, all you can say about this is it's a spider. That's it. Nothing else. Uh, but there are tens, indeed, probably hundreds of specimens available study, if only we had enough people to look at them all. Um, so I looked at a few, and here are some examples. These are from the Parachute Creek member uh, in Lake Goshoot. This is a crab spider. These things sit around on flowers and vegetation, crawl around in the grass, uh, effectively sitting and waiting for something to come their way, and then they just grab them. Uh, so a fairly typical modern looking crab spider. Uh, Euloborids, these are weavers of orb webs, but orb webs using a special kind of hackle, hackle silk. Um, in some cases the orb is reduced to a single line. Um, so Euloborids, uh, this is another one, this one in fact we can put into a modern genus. So Eocene spiders are very modern <laughs> in appearance. Hercilias, this one goes into the modern genus Herciliola. Many of these things are fast running spiders on tree trunks, but you also find them under stones like Herciliola. You turn over a stone in the Mediterranean and these things snuffle off. Uh, very distinctive long, uh, long spinnerets back here. You can see. here. Uh, Selenopid, these are, are fast running hunting spiders. Okay. So a variety of different <coughs> kinds of spider uh, occur there. And putting them all together, we can see that they vary from, the, the, they're mostly um, echidae living under stones or on the ground. Some of them make webs, capture webs, the euloborids. And they're mostly tropical, subtropical. So we're beginning to get a clue that you know, it, it works in with all the other biota to tell us this is a subtropical or tropical Now let's look at another lake deposit. Um, this is Thorison. This is a similar sort of age. Um, a little bit younger, I think. And it, it occurs in Colorado. It's, uh, this is Thorison Fossil Beds National Monument. Um, and there you find uh, these are ash 
um, volcanic plastic dammed lakes. And among the ash beds, you get uh, you get some um, shales which contain insect fossils predominantly. You get oops, you get these giant let's go back, giant tree trunks like this. Um, best known for its insects, beautiful fossil butterfly, bee, uh, very nice plant fossils. But there are also some fossil spiders of various kinds, like posids wolf spiders, uh, my game wolf spider, <coughs> type of ground living spider. Uh, and this is Nephila. Nephila is a modern genus of the golden orb weavers. There's a modern one for comparison, very long neck, very large. Notice the way that the legs are all splayed out. And it was it was pointed out that in fluorescent the these spiders nearly all have their legs splayed out rather up. Let's go to a third uh, potentially lacquer strine deposit, um, the Crato formation in Brazil, famous for fossil fish, insects, the odd four legged snake, um, <laughs> and also some nice fossil spiders. This is Cretaceous in age, so it's mm -hmm. older, and there's been some dispute as to whether in fact this is actually a lake or some branch of the sea. There's marine influence. Uh, here's some of the other biota, scorpion, dragonfly. Uh, and again, you get fish mass mortalities in this situation. That seems a common theme. Very diverse spider fauna. Um, many of these haven't been described. This is a mygalomorph, which has been a diplurid, very long spinnerets. Uh, interestingly, if you turn over the rocks in the quarries of Kratel formation, you find living diapurids on the And something I noticed particularly, compared to all the other lacustrine deposits I've been looking at, is how many, many of the specimens have their legs all curled up. Um, normally, if you see dead insects, dead, dead spiders floating on the pond surface, the legs are if you find them dead in the corner of your living room, their legs are all scrunched up, they're clearly desiccated and in a quite different environment. So we thought, well, what's the reason for this? Why is it that, in, particularly in Prato, they're all, they're all scrunched up, whereas other, other ones they're not? And here's a comparison, here's some examples of Prato formation spiders, legs very much curled under the body. Fluorescent, I mentioned, they're all, they're all spread out. But Green River, they're, they're kind of in between. <coughs> now, what is it that's special about spider legs? Well, what is unique to spider legs is that the two major flexure joints, the femur, sorry, the, the tele, sorry, the femur patella joint and the tarsus, metatarsus joint, have no extensive muscles. They only have flexors. So a spider can flex its legs, and the only way it can extend them is by hemolymph pressure. It's a hydrostatic system. OK, so what we did, first of all, was go back to the fossils and measure the angles of the legs to see, in fact, if we could show that this was really the case. It wasn't just casual observation. So this is comparison the two patella joint angles in these three fossil deposits. So we've got the fluorescent, nearly all of them are spread out from the main Crato, they're all clustered down here. They're all curled up, just as I said. <coughs> Green River is a bit more diverse. It's, it's rather more spread out, but they tend to be mostly uh, spread out. Now, what's the reason for this? Now, we had an idea it might have something to do with salinity. Um, so, to test this, we got a lot of spiders. <laughs> little Mangora maculata happened to be common at the time of doing it. And we drowned them in lots of different salinities. So, we've got hypersaline, saline, and fresh water. And I think you can see that in the fresh water, 
the legs are all extended out. The uh, saline, they're a bit curled up. In the hybrid saline, they're strongly curled up. So I'm going to plot these and we get these sorts of graphs, which quite closely mimic what we found in those three. So that conclusion is the crackle spiders most resemble those drowned in hypersaline water. And so the suggestion is that in fact that at least those days that contain the fossils, the water was hypersaline. Fluorescent spiders most resemble the freshwater ground spiders. So fluorescent is a typical freshwater lake with no evidence of that of any hypersalinity. Green River in between. Green River, the problem is that certain layers are hypersaline and certain ones are. And if you just take an overall sample, you're probably going to get a bit of both. Uh, and so a bit more work needs to be done looking at if it works down to individual beds. So most likely it's osmosis that is giving us this answer. In fresh water, osmosis is, is, is causing the levels <coughs> to extend. In hypersaline, uh, it's working together with river waters and causing the legs to Oh. So the degree of flexure of spider leg joints can be used as an indicator of paleosalinity. This is something that sedimentologists <laughs> have been <laughs> wondering about. Here's the answer. Thank you very much.